it's time now to understand how easy can filming be in India. And to tell us all about this ease, we have the head of the film facilitation office, uh, Mr. Vikram Jeet Roy. Vikram, may I please request you to come up? And to put him at complete unease on the hot seat is actor producer Sanjay Suri. Don't fall for his charms, he can drive a really mean conversation. So all about towards ease of filming in India with the film facilitation office. Over to you, Sanjay. Thank you, Anupama. Thank you, Phil Bazaar, for having this uh, session. Uh, I'm a producer, and uh, before I get into this conversation, I'd just like to know how many producers are sitting here, online producers, or... Okay, there is a small participation, but relevant one. We're going to talk to Head of Department, Vikram Jitroy. Film Facilitation Office was launched two years ago, right here at Film Bazaar. Ease of filming in India. Fact or fiction? Very much fact. Over a thousand films get made in India. And entrepreneurial nature of filmmakers, producers, we've been doing this for decades. There was a, there was a need of some participation, some responsibility. We all want film tourism, film tourism, film tourism, but uh, the ground reality was different. But still, approximately 1,000 films a year, TV productions, commercials, documentaries, and now the number is just increasing. We have 200 over films over here at one film bazaar. Uh, you understand the landscape very well. Just make it very simple for our producers, line producers, to understand what is your role right now, and how do you see it unfolding in the years um, ahead? Thank you, Sanjay. The Film Facilitation Office of the Ministry of Information Broadcasting is housed and operated by the NBC, which in itself is a unique institution because of its agenda for development, its mandate to develop the film sector and create a balanced world. In that, the NBC plays a very important role to ensure that the film in India mandate is executed on ground, which means that all international filmmakers who wish to shoot in India will have to necessarily come through the film facilitation office, which is the single window facilitation mechanism for their needs. We have now extended this operational mechanism to include the domestic industry. So from an international perspective, we ensure that once their submission is made in India, their scripts are analyzed, not from a creative perspective, but from the fact that are there any issues that are sensitive to the positioning and the imagery of India or to Indian culture. Once that is done, we ensure that the Ministry of Home Affairs, uh, which has now been relaxed, that permission process of the Ministry of Home Affairs, for international films, those who are not in the sensitive areas, those who are not shooting in sensitive areas, we can go directly to the Ministry of IMB and say, yes, permission should be given. And I must appreciate our team who have worked really hard to ensure that permissions are given to international filmmakers. These are feature filmmakers, television series, web series, reality shows and reality series. Within three weeks, that's our mandate, and we follow that. Um, as far as the uh, domestic industry is concerned, we have reached out to all domestic filmmakers and told them that wherever you need facilitation for your permissions or for your ease of shooting, we will reach out to our network. I must say that this entire initiative would not have been possible had we not got stellar support on from on ground from the various states that exist. And there are some people here that I really wish to acknowledge. There's Kanti, Sophie Saab, Gupta Ji, <coughs> Sandy Saab, um, the gentleman from Jharkhand, he's here. They are noted officers representing Gujarat, Delhi, Rajasthan, uh, Maharashtra, Jharkhand. All the film officers that you see here, our efficiency without them wouldn't have been possible. 
And this is a fantastic uh, example of center-state collaboration, uh, wherein they understand the sensitivities of the filmmaker. We understand the sensitivities of the filmmaker. We also understand the limitations that the rules and regulations bring in. They are not constraints. And I would like all the producers to, to understand that these are not constraints. There are rules and regulations. And if you approach the Film Facilitation Office, who will then integrate with our nodal officers, with the state nodal officers who are there, and that constraint can be resolved. The rules and regulations which are there, if they are followed, the ease of filming is there. We had a fantastic meeting today in the morning, wherein um, there was a very healthy discussion in how this integration can be further. And I'm sure that on ground challenges which exist, I'm not saying everything will happen overnight. But the fact of the matter is that the step has been taken and an endeavor has been made. It's fair enough to actually compliment you on this uh, because I know, ironically, I was a part of, uh, like me, many other producers, like producers, who are doing domestic and international productions, were part of the planning commission, ideation, and even three years ago, uh, so one has seen this evolve. Uh, the challenges which you are facing, which you will, you know, just to elaborate, uh, maybe an international producer over here. Now we see state representations here, but I'm sure you're dealing with the railways, the archaeological survey of India. So can a producer expect you to, very simple thing, I want to shoot at an ASI property, or I have railways to deal with, or I have certain sensitive areas to shoot in, but my material may not be sensitive. Um, because gauging, because once you said the script is to be sub submitted, so it becomes very sub subjective. Who's reading that script? Do you have qualified people reading that script and evaluating what are the dangers of, you know, so no filmmaker would want to maybe give out this script to, to a government agency. So how are you going to tackle that? So the script bit is for the international films. Those who wish to shoot in India have to mandatorily give their script for review. It is reviewed not from a trade perspective. It is reviewed from India's positioning perspective, from India's imaging perspective. And that is reviewed by people who are very competent. Uh, they are primarily IFS officers, uh, retired, very senior retired IFS officers, ambassadors who understand that domain. They understand what are the sensitivities involved in India's position, be it a bilateral issue with another country, uh, be it a neighboring country, uh, be, it, be it something that will impact India's image on the long term basis. They look at it from that perspective. And we have found, um, like in a couple of films, uh, especially in the German film, uh, wherein there were certain objections raised regarding India's position. But when there were, that's where the FFO comes in. Because some of us in the FFO understand government, some of us in the FFO understand the industry and creativity. So there's a good view. So I'll just finish. Sanjay, what happened in this particular case? We were able to impress upon the filmmaker and give him the perspective that the ambassador had, the former ambassador had. The director took that on account. And we were able to give the creative perspective to the ambassador. As a result of which, there were no glitches. The film went on the floors, shot very well, completed within time, bang on. So that facilitation is where we found the glitch. Now, it is an issue that some people say that, look, we don't want to submit the script internationally. That's an issue that we'll have to take up with the Ministry of IMP, and hopefully we'll find a solution to that. The A side, Sanjay, we have a nodal officer even in the central government. So there are 15 ministries and departments. Um, the Airports Authority, Coast Guard, Ministry of Defense, Railways, ASI, Customs, etc. Ministry of External Affairs, Home Affairs. Uh, they have nodal officers too. And we integrate and we interact with them. So certainly we will be able to represent uh, the producer, his uh, need to the central ASI. As far as the state ASI is concerned, we have our nodal officers here. And they will certainly uh, help us. The state nodal officers are 24-7. Uh, and I'm sure if I reach out to Sopiji or Kyatiji or Kuttaji, you know, uh, Seni, they will immediately get on to it. In fact, I want to say that Mr. Seni 
helped us solve an issue within 48 hours. There was an actor who was uh, a big actor, Hollywood actor, uh, and there were certain constraints coming to the shooting. We reached out to some uh, two seconds. Happened 48 hours. Fantastic. That was the permission part, and then you working as a funnel for producers to enter uh, filmmaking or make ease of filmmaking. Now, the other challenge is that um, we pretty much work like a cottage industry or like a family, you know, run businesses or word of mouth. I want to shoot in this area. Do you know anyone? So people with access get their way around. People with, with no access have to depend on um, certain people or elements and they, they have the risk of being exploited. Uh, do you, going forward, because I know right now there's no database um, available. It's very strange. Country producing thousand films is not database. Um, uh, so are you working towards a database? If I'm a producer, whether Indian or international, I want to shoot in a certain state or a district or a village, who are the people uh, as vendors who can facilitate uh, at the top level funnel is working from film friendly cities, I would say, would say Mumbai or Chennai or Hyderabad or, you know, Pune, Kolkata. But, for example, there's no industry in, um, there's, there's no industry in Jammu Kashmir, for example. There's no industry in certain, maybe in certain um, state. Now, how can you facilitate in connecting people, not at a government level, but a database where they, it's available, you need a line producer, you need local talent, you need local skills, because very often we need to move everyone from our home city for ease of use, for skill development. So it's, are you working towards that also? Because FFO, I remember, had discussed skill development also two years ago. So you don't need to carry everyone of the unit of 100 people. Sometimes you don't have the budgets. If I'm going to Gujarat, let me see what is available there. So is that in the pipeline? Yes. This is, in fact, in the morning. In our, in our own internal meeting uh, between the state hotel officers and the film facilitation office, uh, database was something that we discussed. And uh, it's an urgent requirement. Uh, we are trying to figure out how to do this. Because A, um, of course, we will get the help from all the state hotel officers. Each state, we'd like to know what are the production facilities, post-production facilities, who are the line producers, transporters, caterers, um, so, that the, so that the filmmaker can actually start taking a decision besides the location or besides, say, the incentives. The other important part is what kind of resources you have. I agree <clears throat> this is a challenge and I accept it. The fact is, now going back, this is going to be a priority area for us that at least we're able to bring out or we're able to publish even if it is a minimum database, it's a start. Even if we have the names of, say, five um, transporters, it's a start. Even if we have the name of five caterers, it's a start. Or five directors, five post-production houses. This is a big challenge, and I accept that uh, this information needs to be disseminated. And uh, maybe next year, you'll be congratulating us for doing this. I'm making that commitment, but this has to be done. So a very, because this discussion can go on, but I'd like to open it up to, to our producers, live producers here. Uh, but a very anecdotal sort of a, you know, an observation, or just a small observation. Now, for example, ESG probably charges 10,000 rupees a day. That's entertainment society of Goa to shoot in Goa, right? Feature films may have the budget. Um, a documentary filmmaker also has to pay 10,000 rupees a day. Um, it's expensive. Probably his whole crew is not charging that much. He's going with four people. I know it's not under your jurisdiction or something, but there are lots of such frustrating points, um, challenges, state-wise. Um, is, there, is there a sort of a website where people can, can, rather than complaints or idea, because you will have, a, it's a big country, diverse, so is there a website where people can ideate and send? I may have five things, another person may have, like we have a documentary uh, filmmaker or a line producer, his 
This problem is a problem starts when you think of shooting in India at the consulate level overseas. So I know you have created a, a, a film visa, which is you know congratulatory. It's wonderful. Um, so when we think filming in India, it's like whoa, okay, who do I go to? Where do I go? So of course FFO is there, but these small things. Your website is not completely um, self-explanatory right now. It's, it's MIB, right? So when can we expect that? It's been now two years, so I just just, just ground reality so that it's ease of filming because you know this is these are the starting points. Yeah. I thought you're not going to ask me this question. <laughs> <laughs> I thought before it comes from there, let me just prepare you. <laughs> now, on a serious note, um, we're a little delayed on the website, and I think that is because when we started our journey. In our enthusiasm, we wanted it to be a completely single window clearance mechanism. And then we understood, probably eight months down the line, nine months down the line, that that was not going to be possible. Which means that if you apply to me for permission of a fort, a railway station, a state, say it could be a lake, it could be a mountain, and a forest, I would be able to give you that permission. What, I, what we understood was that each of the jurisdictions, the ASI jurisdiction, the railway jurisdiction, the state jurisdiction, or the forest jurisdiction, had their own um, regulations, rules, which perhaps, if they had to be amended, would need to take a lot of time. A lot of, uh, there would be procedural issues. So that took us eight months to get, as I said, when we started, we were on a learning curve. Then we said, no, let's revise it. So we revised our, um, the, the, the website into saying we will keep it facilitation. We will list things. And then you click on that and you are taken to that respective organization or institution or state. And then their processes are followed. We will facilitate. I am hoping that we uh, would be able to kind of have a website by next year. I mean, that's full on. The whole effort and the endeavor is there. Okay, this is something that is pitching us to now. Just two more questions and then I'll open it up. Um, uh, how well staffed are you for your response time? Great question. I want to introduce my team here. Just like, in fact, I, I consider our valuable nodal officers from different states also as an extension of our family. But our immediate family is here. There is Sunita Rawat, there is Lina, Nidhi, are you here? Okay, Nidhi is there. Alex is here. Govind Babu is here. So Govind Babu looks after Maharashtra. Alex looks after East and Northeast. Sunita looks after all the central ecosystem, the states. Outreach is handled by Lina. Nidhi handles the entire South and our outreach. Our response time is as I We work 24-7. So, so uh, there was there was a, uh, the UP said. I forgot Kavita. Sorry, I forgot Kavita marketing. Yeah. But there were any, uh, right now maybe 70 or 45 films are being shot in UP. Right. What? How fast can you, you know, respond to that? See, we. I mean, they they are going direct. But tomorrow, if I say, hey, go to FFO, they'll sort out your, you know, okay. things. So, say you're 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 you are a producer, right? And you want to shoot, say in um, local bar. And you want to shoot in Nasik. And you want to shoot in Kura. Now, those permissions we are not giving. But you are putting us in touch with the right Yes, name. I will immediately put you in touch with Mr. Sen, who is from Maharashtra. And we will walk with you till those permissions are given to you. But knowing my interaction with the states, their turnaround times are easy too. So once you go to Mr. Seni's ecosystem, he will have his own process. Right now, I am giving to understand in today's meeting that they have a fantastic compendium of uh, locations which is coming up. In fact, we were so impressed with him that all the state local officers and we want to learn from him. Yes. If you go to Gujarat, say you are shooting in various destinations in Gujarat, you will find that the integration will go much beyond um, just giving you permissions. Uh, there is a case study that I was so interested in, uh, which Kathy has done where they have taken Tumhari Sulu and they have actually gone and done a marketing integration, a forward integration. 
So what I have seen here is a very dynamic evolution of not just the permission process, but also in how can we provision the state and therefore the film mutually beneficial um, across the media. Uh, we are talking to Sophie Sam for a TV show. We are telling him that how can you integrate with that film and promote yourself in Denmark. The Danish filmmaker has given us the locations. So she gets the international, she has an international film coming into India. You get the international permit from here. She has a lot of ASI involvement. We would represent her with the ASI. There's a lot of requirement from the state. We will represent her to the state. And then Mr. Sophie will then take it forward. So similarly with Rajasthan, similarly with Jharkhand, similarly with Telangana, all across India. But that permission to shoot in that street I not hope you can encourage the police as well because the beat guy is my problem. <laughs> <laughs> we discussed that in some They just beat it. <laughs> uh, uh, last question specifically to international producers. When we shoot abroad, overseas, we get a back refund mostly. Will these people get a GST refund 18% on? They just come here. They provide foreign exchange. There's a lot of advertisement for your states going out, free advertisement. This film was shot in the country. How do we incentivize that? Is the government looking at that? Uh, or can you speak to the cabinet in the coming months? This GSC refund should kick in because 18% going, nobody gets, uh, probably the, the Indian producer, the live producer is providing services locally, but for a foreign company, he may not even get a set off or something, you know. So has anyone looked into this? Yes, we've looked into it for sure, and this is something that we've also discussed today. Um, it's just that it'll take a process in terms of Because if Akshay Kumar can get it in UP, international producers should be able to get it in India, right? Absolutely, so absolutely. And that is something which uh, in one of our forthcoming workshops is uh, we want to table that. We want to first understand um, how both of us can come together on it, yeah, and then, of course, the Ministry of IMD would like to approach them through the good offices of uh, our leadership, um, especially the managing director. And th this is an issue that needs to be taken. Yes. Thank you. And now, please, invite the questions. Yes. Hi, Rikaji. This is Girish Srivastava from Indian Broadcasting Foundation. Just taking a clue from the last question that uh, Sanjay asked about uh, GST, the biggest problem that the entire entertainment sector, the film particularly, is going to face is the local body tax. And the local body tax is not included in GST, that's where the whole chain breaks, and it's going to be a serious problem. So, have you done any planning on that? And, you know, at our level, we are you know, talking to finance and uh, the leaves don't seem to be moving on this. It's a very, very important thing for the sector. Otherwise, whole service would be very expensive. Um, this issue is being taken on by the other industry <coughs> bodies, like the Film Producers Guild, the IMPA, and other bodies. We, sticking to our mandate, first of all, if you look at the entire uh, filming process in India, which is so complex and therefore, Sanjay as a producer, I had these relevant questions. My, if you ask me, my priority right now is to address those challenging issues. So for me to ensure that if the ASI gives you permission to shoot, or if you're applied to ASI for a permission, then you have it within that time. If you're going to the railways, it's being facilitated for you. You know, we just attended a major conference of film commissioners in Los Angeles recently. And my learning from that was that the first thing that the filmmaker looks at, and this is the international filmmaker I'm talking about, is ease of facilitation, the point that's in Jemaine, and which is very, very relevant. Today they get a permission in three weeks. No questions asked. They apply. In fact, the other day I got a big hug. He said, hey, we applied, we got, a, we got a permission. That is the mandate first. Once we evolve, once we have our website coming in, Certainly we'll look at incentives, certainly we'll look at these. See, I met the president of HBO and I said, would incentives affect you? He said, no, give me ease of film. Just let me navigate. I'm not saying what you're, what you're saying is not important, but I think there are other industry bodies 
that can take it out. Right now, we don't want to get into that space. And rather, we get an incentive program for international filmmakers. We've also spoken to our state notary officers. If they can go back and talk about and GST be waived off. But as I said, it'll evolve. It will not happen as GST. That's a very, very quick remark on this. Why I was saying this, ease of uh, filming is completely we truly appreciate the commendable work that NPC is doing, everybody is doing. The problem is, the moment you provide a window, say Sanjay wants to shoot something in MP and in Chhattisgarh and all over, the feeling that I am getting, since local body tax is out, every chief minister will decide their own rate and their whole business proposition will become unviable. This is very, very alarming. So my suggestion would be since this is a huge gathering which is happening eight, nine days, uh, Vikram Deep, maybe you can take signature from a couple of hey. producers, actors here and give it to Ministry of Finance with a footnote that this is what the film industry feels and please do it, attend it. Otherwise, every state, this is a state subject, and they will have their own rate and they will have no mechanism to debate. That is a problem. Noted. 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 Vikramjit uh, and Sanjay, thank you for this lovely exchange and for all the work that you're doing with me, the theatre for. Uh, just one little clarification from the discussion you had on the script that is acquired by an international producer to submit before the authorities while taking permission. Is that same rule applicable when an Indian producer uh, seeks permission to? Shoot at any location in India. For, for an Indian filmmaker, you don't need to come to the airport. Right. Um, technically, it's just that the international person, the international filmmaker, we have a single window facilitation mechanism. For the Indian filmmaker, you don't need script approvals unless and until you are asked specifically by an institution. For say, for example, you're shooting in Rajasthan, and the Rajasthan state may wish to ask you for your script to see if whatever representation that you are making is correct or not. They may, they may not. That will be the individual call of the state of Rajasthan when you apply to them. And from the nodal officers that I am interacting with, they are very, very reasonable. Coming to the ASN, so that's the state. Now similarly, it could be Bengal, it could be Nagaland, it could be any of the states. When you go to the police to seek a permission, they may, they may not. It depends on that jurisdiction. ESI, I know for a matter of fact, and uh, Sanjay, you'll bear that when we had our uh, first film tourism symposium, the ASI said that they would like to know how their monument is positioned in the film and what you're doing in that scene, that location. We had then raised an issue saying that, look, there is a CBFC, you can take a call. So as I said, this is something that we will have to talk to the ASI and see how it can be resolved. But the ASI is concerned that, look, it's a national monument. We would like to know how the national monument is being. Uh, that's a fair point because I think there's a lot of carelessness during production also. People have ended up damaging some monuments, putting up a light or just, you know, sticking a nail over there, and so they're, they're, the, this, the producer responsibility also involved there. So hence... It's not an intuitive call. It's not like to change your story or anything. It's not that. The neighbors might, you know, now I believe because of some people have been very careless. You know, and they've shown railways in a poor line when actually there were facilities. So the railways may say, look, if you're using my jurisdiction, it is within my right to know how you're going to be treating that platform. Again, as I said, these are things which are written, but from our understanding and our meeting with these nodal officers, with the other officers, the police department, they're extremely reasonable. Yes, hello. Okay. Hi, I'm Dylan Gray. Uh, I've been um, working on international movies in India for 20 years, uh, and I've been in contact with a lot of international producers. i uh, just take a little issue with something you said, because you said you had this meeting with film commissioners and, um, in Los Angeles, I guess it was. Uh, I don't think for the international producers coming to India, the main concern is ease of facilitation. The main concern that I hear most of the time is worry about censorship. Uh, you know, when you talk about submitting the script, we, our company has another, another base in Hungary, for example. Hungary has a lot of foreign production. But people that go to Hungary are primarily interested in cost 
and use a facilitation because most of those projects are set in other places. They're set in Germany, France, Russia, whatever. People that come to India as international producers almost always have projects that are set in India. So they've made significant investments in optioning those properties, developing those scripts, uh, sometimes millions of dollars, and it's very scary for them to face the prospect of, of not being able to make their movie in India because of some censorship issue uh, by submitting their script, because they have no really very few other options to shoot it somewhere else then, unlike somebody who's going to a South Africa or a, a Canada or a, a Hungary, where they're mainly doing that for business reasons. Um, so, I mean, as I recall earlier, it wasn't just a case of submitting your script, you also had to have a sensor on the set, observing every shot, they would then check your rushes, check your sound tapes, post factum. So I'd be interested in hearing if that is, has been done. Not at all. Not at all. Okay. Not not earlier it was like that. No, not at all. Well, I'd experience not at all. I think, <laughs> I think there is a, there's a confusion. There are certain, there are certain scripts or certain screenplays where the person who's reviewed it, we had a couple of examples you know, where he feels that there should be a liaison officer who should see that the reviewer's remark, which has been made, have been followed. The liaison officer does that, he executes that, and he gives a report. If it is really sensitive, as I said, to the positioning of India, to the imagery of India, the bilateral relationship of India, that's a call that the government takes. And so far, in our existence from 2015 of December, we started facilitating from 2016 in June. Whoever we've asked for a review of the script has exactly done it, and uh, there's been no problem at all. They've shot in India. They've been very happy. Right, well, it's only one year. I mean, I'm talking about a 20 year uh, narrative here. I mean, yeah, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad you exist and I'm glad you're, you're trying to make this better. But this, I'm just mentioning this is a really big issue for international. Also, right? maybe I'd just like to jump in here. We need to understand and, and actually compliment them that this, uh, they realized this bridge was not there. So all they're doing is facilitating, so not guaranteeing, because at a local level, law and order, all those issues are going to be evaluated at a local level. Um, you can make an, you don't have to be an international producer, you can be an Indian producer and get stuck much later. We have a big case study recently, right? So, uh, so they don't guarantee, but they're facilitating, I think, and it's very early days of FFO, first two years only, and like you said, 2016, June. So, while you know the problems, and slowly you're uh, solving them, and which is which is commendable. Uh, we just hope that the momentum is sort of increased, and uh, because uh, sorry, we don't have much time now. Another two minutes to take one question over there. Yeah, but but I just want to assure you, sir, if if there are any issues, you are most welcome to come to us, and uh, we work 24/7. You can, our numbers are here. Um, my team is here. If there are any issues that you have, we'll solve it for you. We just find there's like a seem to be a lot of extreme sensitivity. I mean, you're talking about the image of India. Now, if somebody is making a film where, for example, poverty is portrayed, now somebody could say that's bad for the image. No, of it's not. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Yes. Let's not go on hypothesis. Mm. There, there is an example of a German film. Mm. And that German film showed poverty. We didn't have a problem with it. But what they showed is that people are dying because of a lack of medicine. And I challenged that. And I said, look, I'm with you. And I know that there are, there are wards outside every hospital that services the poor people. We have a fantastic medical ecosystem. Show that. Let there not be any falsification. And this is an act, this is. And the film got passed. And the director said, fantastic, I'll do it. We've had a lot of issues with documentary films uh, where filmmakers have gotten permission uh, through the embassies and high commissions abroad have planned their production, made investments, and then that permission has been revoked without explanation. Uh, do you have any purview on documentaries? No, we don't have purview on documentaries. As I said, the essence of it is that there is reasonability. Let there be no falsification. 
Then there will be no titillation. That's all my suggestion. One question, yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Krishnayandu Bose, a documentary filmmaker and a line producer for, for documentaries, non-scripted. I don't know whether it comes under FFO. No, it doesn't. Uh, but, I mean, I'm just trying to uh, share a very generic sort of experience. Uh, what I was saying that we are very excited that, you know, a, a forum like FFO has been created and you're not hopefully going to run from pillar to post for permissions. But still, I, I need to caution you, because the last guy in that chain is actually, you know, creating trouble, uh, potentially, they can. And so facilitation means that you, you get us to the last guy who's actually signing on the permits. But that is the guy who actually controls a lot of things. We were doing, uh, we just finished a long uh, series on the railways for a Canadian company, Discovery actually. And we had a harrowing experience with the railways. Because what was happening was that one sheet of paper, same sort of format for legalities and signing, every state was interpreting, that officer sitting across the table, he was interpreting in a different way. So you have a whole different set of permissions and requirements, which was un unexpected. I mean, uh, I think what I take from your point is that sensitization, uh, which the states can do with your different uh, departments and areas, because it's it's also, um, I, I've experienced that taking permission from, for example, police, local police. So they'll say, okay, who all are coming? Say, what do you mean, who all are coming? <laughs> so, so if there's a, you know, there are names attached, some red card is laid out, but there are no names attached. Okay, you come in. It, it gets done, but it, you just have to wait a little longer. Why don't you... I'm just an example I'll give you of the advertising filmmakers and I remember a delegation of ad filmmakers who was not with an upper view. Um, they came and met us. And I said, you know, why don't we take a delegation of ad filmmakers and we will introduce you to the nodal officer. Go and meet him. So I think as documentary filmmakers, if you have an association or if you have a uh, trade body, you should go and meet all these uh, association uh, members, all these nodal officers the concerned person, and trust me, they're very, very reasonable. You know, you, you, they're just concerned that the rules and regulations be followed. That's their job, and that's what the jurisdiction demands. And we have found, you know, to our utter pleasant surprise, that all the international filmmakers who have come here and shot are very happy to follow it and ask process. How do we get three weeks permission? Within three weeks, we have we have the permission. It's because the entire ecosystem has put up with it. And I think now you also and have... Filmmakers are doing it. So my sincere suggestion to you is that as documentary filmmakers, if there is a great body, please have discussions with them. And if you want us to introduce you to the nodal officer, we'll be very happy to introduce you to the present person. That was fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Time is up. But this discussion uh, can go on. Uh, thank you. And, and we are here. We are happy to address your concerns and happy to meet you. Thank you so much.